Welcome to the Squared Circle Pit with your host, Rob Paspani. Welcome to the Squared Circle Pit. I am your host, Rob Paspani. We have a very, very special episode here today. I'm flying solo and I'm very excited because I have some opinions. I'm going to be ranking every WrestleMania ever, all 39 WrestleManias that happened in anticipation for WrestleMania 40 next week. I want to rank all of them on the tier maker. So I'm going to be tiering them up and taking a quick look at the tiers. We have GOAT. These are just the five star WrestleManias, the absolutely legendary ones that will live forever. In history, we have those. I'm not going to be giving that one out willy-nilly. Those are going to be reserved to a special few. Then we have A for Amazing, writes itself. These are the, you know, four and three-quarter stars pay-per-views. These are the ones that are very, very great pay-per-views, but just missing that element to, to get into the GOAT. B, pretty good. There's going to be plenty of these. <laughs> pretty good is... Not quite amazing, but had a few matches that are legendary and, and still worth going out of your way to see. We have C, all right, would be a C, you know, passing grade. D, pretty bad. These are ones, while might have a good match or two overall, the whole show, bit of a clunker. And then F, shit show. Easy, self-explanatory. So let's go through them. Uh, of course, there's 39 WrestleManias. You could watch them all on Peacock. And I've seen them all, some of which multiple times. But I guess the newer the WrestleMania, the less frequently I've seen it. WrestleMania and I, fun fact, are the same age. I guess I'm a few months older than WrestleMania because the year of the WrestleMania always corresponds to how old I am at the time WrestleMania is happening. So WrestleMania 40 is this year, and I am, in fact, 40. Uh which is actually feel, feels a little better than uh, being a 38, I got to tell you. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the tearing up, starting, of course, with the first WrestleMania, Madison Square Garden, the one that started it all. I've seen the show. It's all right. It's, you know, I will give this a pretty good. There is, of course, the legendary history aspect of it. The main event is excellent. It is a great main event, but... Overall, the show doesn't, it, it's more of like a glorified house show. It, it wasn't quite the uh, WrestleMania it has come to be known. So that's the first WrestleMania. WrestleMania 2. Now, this one has a very special place in my heart. When I was a kid, I would love renting this WrestleMania. I love the concept of the three different venues, three different main events, the battle royal with the NFL players against the WWF Legends, which of course Andre the Giant won. I was a big fan of the show. But as an adult, I admit it doesn't quite hold up. Uh, so I will give this one an all right. And the main event, kind of a stinker. WrestleMania 3, Andre vs. Hogan. Like I said, I'm not going to be giving this out a lot, but this is easily a goat. This was the biggest attendance for a WWF event for a very, very long time. This was like their landmark. This was when they finally got wrestlemania i feel this is when wrestlemania became wrestlemania this main event was the biggest match of the the moment it was one of the most iconic feuds in the history of the company and right under it was one of the greatest matches in wrestlemania history which was macho man versus freaky the dragon steam but those two matches alone make this a goat <laughs> put it this way in the wwe 2k game when you do the history of wrestlemania there aren't even any matches from the first two wrestlemanias the first match you have to perform in is ricky steamboat versus macho man and then the second one is andre versus hogan that shows you how important this pay-per-view is then we have WrestleMania 4 at Atlantic City at Trump Plaza. Well, they said it was a Trump Plaza. It was really at the convention center across the street. And this one had the world title tournament after the controversial Saturday night's main, or the, the controversial The Main Event. It was actually on a Friday night. Between Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant, So uh, where Andre kind of gifted the belt to, to Teddy DiBiase. If you were a kid at the time, this was one of the craziest angles of the moment. I loved the tournament situation. I loved seeing Macho Man's Ascent. My favorite thing on this show was the Strike Force 
disbandment. Ricky, Rick Martel turning on Tito Santana. I was such a big Strike Force fan. I was very upset at this. But overall, I'm going to you know be fair here. This gets it all right. WrestleMania 5, again, at Trump Plaza. Uh, I would say that the feud between the Mega Powers was incredible. And that alone, I think, brings us to a pretty good status. I feel not too many other memorable matches on the show, which is why I only give it a pretty good. WrestleMania 6, the infamous Sky Dome, the Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan. If you've listened to the show regularly, you know my feelings on this main event and how I went through a state of denial because Hulk Hogan lost. But with that said, this was an iconic show. Uh, a lot of really, really fun stuff on the show. I'm going to give this an amazing. This, this is the first amazing, not quite GOAT status, because I feel like the undercard didn't have too many memorable things. Because we had the big boss man face turn. That's the only thing that really pops into my head for uh, WrestleMania 6. Uh, but really, it was a one-match show. WrestleMania 7, this is where things get rough. What's so wild is, you know, the memory I have of WrestleMania 7 is watching this in my elementary school. Uh, her principal was a big wrestling fan. And essentially, every year for WrestleMania, uh, he would give the teachers a whole day off, or at least like two, two and a half hours off, while the whole school watched WrestleMania like the Monday after it happened. So that's how I remember watching the show. And to be clear, he was showing us an, uh, an illegally taped bootleg that he recorded off of pay-per-view. I wonder if the school paid for the pay-per-view. Oh, what do I say? He probably had a hot box, right? This is South Brooklyn in the <laughs> late 80s, early 90s. Uh, with that said, as much as I have very fond memories of this show, it was not a good show. This is the first WrestleMania that I would declare a shit show, namely for the incredibly tasteless uh, Sergeant Slaughter Iraqi sympathizer angle. And ultimately, I feel like this is where Hulk Hogan kind of is starting to feel a little passe. And it's just like we need to move on from Hulk Hogan. You know what? I'm going to move this up to pretty bad only because I just remembered the career ending match with macho man randy savage and the ultimate warrior and as weird as the ultimate warrior was in this one the reunion with macho man and miss elizabeth with miss elizabeth jumping the railing beating up sensational sherry queen sherry and hugging macho man that emotional that real soap opera moment that was the lasting memory of this show which is enough to save it to just Pretty bad. I, I'm even considering moving it to all right, but that main event is enough to keep it pretty bad. Now we're we're in into a string of not so good shows. I feel uh, WrestleMania eight did have the the weird but fun Macho Man Ric Flair angle where Flair photoshopped himself into photos with Miss Elizabeth, and we didn't really learn about the fact that it was photoshopped until after the event for some reason, and uh, the severely under delivering Sid Justice Hulk Hogan match. However, this also did have a really fun Bret Hart versus Roddy Piper intercontinental title match. And because of the uh, Macho and Ric Flair match, I'll give this one an all right. This is an all right. WrestleMania nine at Caesars Palace. I really loved this outdoor setup. And I think this was the first WrestleMania that was outdoors. And I love that it was during the daytime. I loved a bunch of the wrestlers on here. Shawn Michaels, Mr. Perfect. But overall, this whole thing was a shit show, especially that weird ending. This was Hog Hogan's return to the Federation. He had been gone basically the whole year after WrestleMania, shooting movies or whatever have you. Forces his way into the scene with a tag team. And out of nowhere, so Yokozuna defeats Bret Hart by cheating for the world title. And then Hogan comes in and they have like a 90 second match and Hogan wins the world title. This was terrible. And at the time, I wasn't even privy to the backstage news that the original plan was to do Bret Hart versus Hulk Hogan. But Hogan didn't want to do it because he didn't want to lose to Bret Hart. But he said that if we do it this way, uh, he would eventually like if he beats Yokozuna for it, then Bret Hart could beat him. Something like that. But eventually Hogan made enough of, of, of a political play where he never did actually lose to Bret Hart. This was a shit show. This was the official first shit show. Uh, WrestleMania 10. This one, uh, you know, it, I, I'm going to give it an, 
I, I, I kind of want to give it a goat status, but I'm going to give it an amazing status. A for amazing. It's not quite goat uh, because there was a lot of crap on this show, but the opening match, Owen Hart versus Bret Hart, one of my favorite WrestleMania matches of all time. You can watch that today still in it. It still is amazing. And, of course, the iconic, legendary first ladder match. In a first WrestleMania ladder match. There was ladder matches in WWF prior to this, I believe, at a... It wasn't a Survivor Series. It was like a, a VHS tape that I remember uh, where it was Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels. was the first ladder match they did. But this was the first big-time, big-stage pay-per-view ladder match, and Shawn and Razor absolutely del- delivered. That match still holds up as well. So this gets an A. I told you, I'm not going to throw a lot in the goats, so don't get upset at me. But if you do get upset at me, let me know on the social media, at Rob Pasbani, at Squared Circle Pit. WrestleMania 11, I'm tempted to give this one a shit show. This was when WWE's cards were at their weakest, but I did kind of like the (laughs) LT Bam Bam thing. Now, this was a shit show. This was a shit show. The main event wasn't good. This is the WrestleMania of the early ones that I probably go to the least. WrestleMania 12, this had the parking lot brawl with Roddy Piper and uh, Gold Dust, which I enjoyed. And of course, the legendary Iron Man match with Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. I wasn't really that much of a fan of the Iron Man match, but I, I, I do concede that a lot of people obviously love that match. I'm going to give it an all right. I'll give it a C, middle of the road for me. WrestleMania 13, this is when WWE... F was really starting to turn things around. This is, I feel like, a big start. I remember there was a really cool street fight with LOD and Ahmed Johnson against the Nation of Domination. There was Mankind and Chainsaw Charlie, the great Terry Funk, against the New Age Outlaws in a cool hardcore match. And a legendary, another big legendary Bret Hart match with him and Steve Austin doing the double turn. No one really talks about the main event, which is uh, Sid versus Undertaker. But that... Austin Bret Hart match though is so great. I'm tempted. You know, what? I'm going to be fair. This is a pretty good. That it's a one match show. That's really the only match you need to see. But some other uh, good stuff. WrestleMania 14. I loved the show. Oh, this was the show. I'm sorry. I'm confused. This was the show with Foley and uh, Terry Funk against the New Age Outlaws. Not the last show. I had that mistake. That was a mistake. This was the birth of the Attitude Era. I think this is the first time we saw the scratch wwf logo and the main event was awesome this was the last time we'd see Shawn michaels wrestle for a very long time this is the beginning of the coronation of stone cold steve austin long overdue one year over a year build i feel they've the i mean from the time that he turned on you know the it took a year to get to the bret hart match at wrestlemania and then from there it was a year build to get him to the world title and they did a great job with it and this this gets an amazing for me as well because this was a, a big, very important show for WWF that really turned them around, especially with the Mike Tyson being in there as well. Then we have WrestleMania 15. I did not like the show. I was not a fan. This this felt like a very disappointing show at a time when WWF was really really hot. I remember not being into the Big Show uh, Mick Foley match, kind of being disappointed by that and feeling like the Rock Steve Austin main event, as much as I look forward to it, was a bit of a mess. I'm going to give this one... I'm going to give this one... It's a shit show. It's a shit show. WrestleMania 2000. WrestleMania 16. I was so excited for this event. They did an all-day pay-per-view where they did a one-hour recap of every WrestleMania leading up to this. So it was like a 15-hour recap. It might have been shorter than an hour each. But I remember it's, the show started at noon... And they went through every WrestleMania, and the main show started at 7. So I guess it's like seven hours of recaps. So I guess they probably did half an hour of WrestleMania. And uh, I, I remember like, oh, now it's getting to the late WrestleMania. It's like well, around 7 or 8. So I went out, hung out outside with some friends, and went to the playground, and then came back and watched the rest of it. And it was a very, very fun thing. But the problem was the main show was not that good. The main event was very disappointing. I did not like the Fatal 4-Way. Mick Foley had just retired the, the month before, and then they brought him back, which felt weird. I can't say this was a shit show because it did have two memorable moments, which was the the first ladder match with the Dudleys, Edge and Christian, and the Hardys. And then 
I remember Chris Jericho, Kurt Angle, and Chris Benoit did some good stuff. I'll give this a pretty bad because this was very disappointing, but not quite a shit show. Then we have WrestleMania 17, and folks, here it is. It's a goat. Like Every match on this show is great. Everything until the last five minutes of the show is absolutely great. This is one of the most iconic WrestleManias of all time. I still think the ending is bad, and I didn't like it. Even going back now, I, I, I can't even, I still, I can't even concede that, oh, the, even, you know, looking back, it holds up. No, it's awful. The ending was, of course, that after years, Steve Austin finally accepted Vince McMahon's help and teamed up with him. And, and what it led to was so stupid. It was like the two-man power trip with Triple H. It just, I, I think it really was, it created a downturn in business because of how <laughs> disappointing it was. But leading up to this, this was so good. This was so good. Triple H, I, I think Motor had to play him out even, or, or there might have been next year, but he had a great match with The Undertaker. This was the second TLC match. The first one was at SummerSlam, but this was the one where all the clips that they use in the recaps are from with the iconic spot where Edge spears uh, hanging Jeff Hardy <laughs> and all the flash bulbs are going off. This is one of the best ones of all time. I remember even at the time thinking it that... Uh, it was so good and it was it was really, really, I remember I had a tape and I kept inviting friends over to show it to them because I was so into this show. Uh, so that's 17. Then we have WrestleMania 18. 18 had a lot to live up to with how great 17 was. It wasn't quite there, but it has maybe uh, my favorite WrestleMania match of all time, which is The Rock versus Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan making his return. Hadn't been at WrestleMania for nine years, WrestleMania 9 was his last WrestleMania. Of course, went to WCW, came back as the NWO version of Hulk Hogan. And his first pay-per-view match was WrestleMania at the Toronto Sky Dome. Same place <laughs> that just 12 years prior or 10 years prior or, or 11 years prior, WrestleMania 7, he lost to the Ultimate Warriors. So the Sky Dome remembered Hulkamania. And it was an incredible, incredible event where... The fans were connecting with Hulk, and they were cheering for Hulk, even though Hulk was the bad guy. And in the middle of the match, both him and The Rock realized what was going on, and they started playing to the crowd, and Hulk started, Hulk started doing his old taunts, which we hadn't seen quite a few years, and it was a really, really special moment, and one of my favorite moments in WrestleMania history. However, there was a lot of stinkers on the show. <laughs> so with that said, I'm going to give this one an amazing, even though it had that. The match itself is a goat, but the event on its uh, overall, would I would give it an amazing, probably, probably more of a pretty good, but that main event really, and honestly, that wasn't even the main event. The main event was Triple H versus Chris Jericho, which again, nobody remembers that match, that weird angle, but that, that match itself with Rock and Hogan was enough to keep this set amazing. We have WrestleMania 19. Mm, I'm going to give this one a pretty bad there was a great Shawn Michaels Chris Jericho match, but this is when WWF kind of really started stinking for me. We had Vince against Hulk Hogan, which was a little bit of a disappointment, although Roddy Piper showed up, which was cool. Uh, that weird ending to the Brock versus Kurt Angle match where Brock gave himself a concussion. This was Steve Austin's last match against The Rock, which was kind of cool, but also kind of a bummer. Overall, I just remember not liking the show, giving it a pretty bad. WrestleMania 20. This one gets a pretty good for me. There's a lot of really good matches. I remember they were back at the Garden. They were on point. The main event was excellent, even though it <laughs> features he who shall not be named anymore. The ending was very great. Uh, it, it's sad that it's tainted now, but I remember very much enjoying the show at the time. WrestleMania 21. This is where things get hard, folks. 21 featured Triple H versus Batista for the world title, which was a great, great feud. Uh, this also featured the crowning of John Cena for the World Championship. And I remember just thinking, like, I just don't get it here. I don't get it. There were some stinkers, though. Aki Bono and Big Show had a sumo match, which was brutal. Triple H, uh, I mean, uh, Kurt Angle and Shawn Michaels did have a match, which was good. Overall, I'll give this one, I'll give it a pretty good. Because there was some good stuff. There was also some bad stuff. And now this is, it's interesting. Now that we're in the, the 20s, this is when my memory is a little more difficult. Now I got to reference Wikipedia a little more. Just because I, I wouldn't have gone back to these. Uh, WrestleMania 22 had Sh Shawn Michaels against Physic Man in an awful match. This was where Vince was doing his feud with God, and 
I just was not into this. John Cena and Triple H was the main feud. There was a really cool Mickey James Trish Stratus feud, though. That was kind of cool. Uh, Edge and Mick Foley had an incredible hardcore match, which may have been the best match of the show. The Money in the Bank ladder match was in. The- you know what? All right, I take it back. I take it back. This one's pretty good. <laughs> I'll give this one a pretty good, even though the main event was not working for me. Then we have WrestleMania 23. Hair versus hair. Trump and Vince McMahon each had a representative, and uh, it was Lashley against Umaga. Steve Austin as the special referee. John Cena versus Shawn Michaels. Th- you know, this was pretty bad. This was pretty. It was. I wouldn't say it was a shit show. I didn't like the Lashley Umaga thing. I didn't like. This, I was over Cena by this point. This is a very rough moment in WWE booking. So, I think this is when I almost started tuning out as well. 24 is when, uh, thing, though, I think things turn, turned around a little bit here. Edge and Undertaker had a great match. I think they had a TLC match for the world title. Uh, they brought in Floyd Mayweather to take on Big Show. And while it was a spectacle, it was a very entertaining spectacle. And this was the famous uh, Ric Flair retirement match, which while the buildup was not so good, I really thought the match itself was great. A lot of good stuff. I'm going to give this one a pretty good. There's good and bad here. This is a rough era for WWE booking. Then we get up to WrestleMania 25. This was in Houston, and they had the legendary match with Shawn Michaels and Undertaker. Match of the year, I believe, for this year by many, in many outlets. But the rest of the card wasn't that great. The only other memorable match was Chris Jericho against Jimmy Snuka, Ricky Steamboat, and Roddy Piper, uh, which was great just to see Jericho and Steamboat go at it. The rest of the show I didn't really like. I'm going to give this one. And all right, this is an all right. Even though it had that great Michael's Undertaker match, it wasn't enough for me to save the show. And in general, my interest in, in, in WWF at this point, in WWE, <laughs> wasn't that good. Next we have, this was the uh, year of, 26 was the year of Shawn Michaels retirement match, which was a bummer to see. But that match was very, very good. Not quite as good as the year before. Uh, and then the world title match was Cena and Batista. There was Jericho and Edge, which was a fun feud, but this is also the weird Bret Hart match with uh, Vince, where Bret, this is post-stroke, so he couldn't quite take any bumps on the head. I don't know. This is a weird show. Well, no, it had the, the Michael's retirement. I'm going to give it an all right. Michael's retirement <laughs> really saved this thing. So then we move on to WrestleMania 28. Ah, this was this was one of the best sets they had, but this is where The Rock came back to be the host of WrestleMania, and the main event was Cena versus The Miz, but really, you know, in the build-up, it seemed like they were building up Cena versus The Rock. That's the match everyone wanted to see, but The Rock wasn't wrestling just yet. This is also where uh, Undertaker uh, and Triple H had their, I believe, second, or no, this is the first match of their series, had a great match here, but overall, I was not a fan of this one. I feel like this is this was a clunker to me. This was pretty bad. And, and, and we're in a dark era uh, for my fandom. Uh, next, it's Miami. It's WrestleMania 28. Once in a lifetime, Cena versus Rock. I was not into, like, I just was over this. By the time they finally got there, I kind of, I hated the build. It was it was weird because I was, I was a Rock fan, but the way he was kind of phoning it in during this moment and then playing, like, the greatest hits, it wasn't really working for me, and I didn't like John Cena, so <laughs> this match didn't work for me. The main event for me was CM Punk against Jericho, uh, and even that, that was fine. You know, it wasn't it wasn't anything special. Uh, we had another Undertaker Triple H match. This one was Hell in a Cell, which that was that was a good match, but overall, this is a pretty bad. This is a pretty bad. I did not like Cena and Rock. And then, uh, of course, if I didn't like the first one, I certainly hated the second one, WrestleMania 29. I remember I even had friends over who weren't wrestling fans. And by the end of the show, I was embarrassed that I had wasted their time and made them watch something that I didn't even like. This had a really boring Triple H and Brock Lesnar match. The only good match on the show was Undertaker and CM Punk, but it was not enough to save a show that also featured Fandango versus Chris Jericho. This is... A shit show, in my opinion. I was not a fan of WrestleMania 29, which is funny because it's one of the largest gates and one of the largest buy rates the show ever did, but not for me. WrestleMania 30, this is where things turn around. 
This is the bur- the first big show on the WWE Network. Everybody's rooting for one guy, and his name is Daniel Bryan. And as much as they tried to resist it, WWE gave us what we wanted, and very much paralleled the ending of WrestleMania 20, which I liked. And in general, just very, very fun. That thing alone was really enough to kind of save the show for me and make this a pretty good event. So to go from shit show to pretty good, I say is is a very nice cat, <laughs> a feather in the cap of WWE. Then we have uh, WrestleMania 31, and I, I'm now trying to decide if I'm going to make this a goat or an amazing. The ending of the show is, of course, iconic. Seth Rollins cashing in his money in the bank and winning the world championship. Here's the thing. This is where Roman Reigns you assumed was going to be coronated. And I didn't want to see Roman Reigns win. I really didn't want to. I want to see Brock win because Brock was absolutely unbelievable in this moment. And uh, we also got Sting on the show, even though the ending kind of... Well, you know what? Honestly, that's what kind of makes this not a GOAT event. Because the ending to Sting was Triple H was so lame that it, it takes off a few points. So this is an amazing show, but truly one of my favorite all-time main events, a GOAT main event, absolutely. And this was another outdoor daytime show because this was on the West Coast. It looks so cool. WrestleMania 32, the one thing I remember about the show, the one thing I remember about the show is basically everyone was injured and they had to s- scramble together to put any sort of card and ended up the biggest match on the card was Undertaker versus Shane McMahon. They had crazy stipulations where if Shane won, he would get control of Raw. Undertaker would, wouldn't wrestle anymore at WrestleMania. And so you wanted Shane to win. Then, of course, he, lo- he lost. I should have mentioned at the uh, WrestleMania 30, of course, Undertaker, Undertaker's streak was defeated. Uh, that was another big moment, but I didn't really like how they did it. Uh, so that took it down a notch as well. But 32, I remember uh, the main event was Roman versus Triple H. And this is another year of, of not really wanting Roman. This was a total shit show. This, this, even though this was the largest attended WrestleMania of all time, finally beating the WrestleMania three record because they were in Dallas. Still, I just was not really into this. <laughs> I was not into it. So it's a shit show for me, folks. WrestleMania 33, or, or uh, no, this yeah, WrestleMania 33. This one was main evented by Roman Reigns against The Undertaker, which is like, by this point, Undertaker's past his prime. Was not into that. That match sucked. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg. That was a fun five-minute match and, and a good ending to that. Then there was the weird Bray, My- Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton match with the, you know, the creepy crawlers on the ring projected onto the ring that didn't work for me seth rollins defeating triple h that was a weird match this was like seth rollins return and uh, i guess the only memorable thing on this match uh, this event was the hardys uh coming back this is this gets a a pretty bad for me we're all a pretty pretty bad for wrestlemania 33 34 back in new orleans and the main event here is brock versus roman reigns and again, I was like, oh, no, this is where Roman gets his big win. I hope he doesn't win. And he didn't win. So that was kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> I was really excited about it. Overall, though, this was kind of a really disappointing show. I get, We did get the return of Daniel Bryan, finally. Him and Shane McMahon defeating Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. That was fun. Otherwise, not really much on the show. Oh, this is the Ronda Rousey debut. That was really... Okay, so you know what? I'm going to give it an all right. This one is all right because it did have the Ronda Rousey match, which was great. It had Braun and uh, teaming up with a nine-year-old to win the tag team titles, which was fun. Yeah, it was all right. (laughs) Then we have the one that I attended in person, WrestleMania 35. This was in New York. This was the first WrestleMania I ever attended live in Technicolor Daddy. And this may have been the longest WrestleMania ever my god i just remember it was raining it was kind of chilly and i was very lucky i got floor seats and if you get floor seats you get to keep the chair but the caveat is you cannot leave with the chair you can leave whenever you want but if you want to take the chair you have to wait until the last match is over until the bell rings on that last match they will not let you leave with that chair and i really wanted this chair and then it became like torture like let me out like i was so looking forward to that becky charlotte and ronda match and just i couldn't even enjoy it just because i was so it was such a long night day i was there for like seven hours it was cold and raining i just wanted to go home but this also had kofi finally winning the title against brian danielson there were some good matches i'll give this one an all right i'm not gonna 
dunk on it too hard. And, and this was the, the last WrestleMania uh, before the pandemic started because 36, of course, was had no fans in attendance. Very, very rough event. It was over two nights uh, th- because of the pandemic. If not for the pandemic, we might not have ever had a two night WrestleMania, which is very interesting to, th- to consider because since there were no fans, they had no problem splitting it up into two days because they were they didn't have to worry about anyone not showing up. This did have the Boneyard match uh, that had the Firefly Funhouse match and drew it overall, though, just because of the vibes. I'm going to give it a shit show just because of the, the pandemic vibes. Just can't handle it. We're, we're approaching the end. Uh, we have two more left or three more left. Thirty seven was uh, the first uh, show that they did with fans since the pandemic started. Uh, it was pretty exciting to hear some live people give reactions. And uh, the main event of night one was Bianca versus Sasha, which was awesome. First two black women to uh, main event WrestleMania, which is such a cool feat. So cool that both of them got have that in, in their cap now that they main evented WrestleMania. But there were also some stickers, Braun versus Shane, New Day versus AJ and Omos, like, Oof. Uh, main event was uh, Roman Reigns against Edge and Daniel Bryan. That match was all right. I'll give it an all right. I, I can't say it was too bad, but I can't say there was anything too great about it. Then we had uh, back in Dallas for the biggest main event in WrestleMania history, another uh, Roman versus Brock match. It was a, the biggest WrestleMania match of all time it was being billed as because it was the world champion against the universal champion, and they were going to do a winner takes all. The winner would be both champions. Eh, eh, that was fine. This also had that really bad uh, Vince McMahon match against Pat McAfee, which I didn't really like <laughs> at all. It did have one of my favorite WrestleMania matches of all time, Johnny Knoxville against Sami Zayn, and I loved Steve Austin and Kevin Owens. I'm going to give this one an all right. Finally, we have last year's WrestleMania. WrestleMania goes Hollywood. Two great shows all the storylines were clicking. All the matches were really good. If, if Cody would have won, this might have brought it up to GOAT status, but I'm just going to say it's amazing because the ending was a little disappointing, even though it's crazy where it led us. And so here is my, my final ranking, my final ranking of tiers for WrestleMania. So I think this is pretty fair. I'm surprised. I thought I would have more in the GOATs, but fair is fair. You know, WrestleMania 39, though, might be in the, you know, it's, it's it's tough. It would be, if there was like a half and half, I would put it like over here, you know, <laughs> this is where it would be. But no, we'll do it here. So in the GOATs, we have WrestleMania 3, WrestleMania 17. Amazing WrestleManias would include WrestleMania 6, 10, 14, 18, 31, and 39. Pretty good would be 1, 5, 13, 20, 21, 22, uh, 24, and 30. All right, <laughs> would be 2, 4, 7, 12, 25, 26, uh, 33, 35, 38, <laughs> or 37 to 38. I see the later ones. I'm like, wait, which one are those? <laughs> Pretty bad. Easily WrestleMania 7, WrestleMania 2000, 19, uh, WrestleMania, which one was this? 23, 5, or, or, or no, no, 24. Oh, my God. No, no, no. <laughs> WrestleMania 23, 26, 27, and 28. And the shit shows are WrestleMania 9, 11, 15, 29, 32, and 36. And that's my te- rankings. What do you think about it? I, I'm curious to know what your rankings are. This is how I rank my WrestleManias. Let me know yours. I'll, I'll include the link to this tier maker in the description. Uh, and next week, I have a really, really cool guest. So I, could, I hope you can. Hang out with me then on the Squared Circle Pit.